Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Melissa Deckman, and I am the CEO of Public Religion Research Institute. We're happy to have you join us today for a webinar that features findings from our latest survey about Americans' abortion attitudes in a post-Roe world. So these are findings from our 50 state 2022 American Values Atlas survey. So I am going to be sharing my screen with you. Give me one second, the PowerPoint is open. Okay, having just a little bit of technical difficulty here. So give me one second, please. All right. Okay. Um, can you all see the the PowerPoint? It just took a little bit for, for to load onto my computer. Okay. Excellent. We're good to go. So before we begin, I just wanted to introduce you to my fellow panelists uh, for today. Joining me today to present the results are Dr. Natalie Jackson, who is the Research Director at PRRI. Um, and also joining us today is Dr. Janelle Wong. She is a professor in the Department of Government at the University of Maryland and a director of the, American, the Asian American Studies Program at the University of Maryland. She's also a recognized expert on the role of religion in public opinion and has written the book, Immigrants, Evangelicals, and Politics in an Era of Demographic Change. Um, I'd also like to say thank you to our very talented research team. We did a wonderful job compiling the survey's analysis, including Dr. Deanna Orses, Ian Huff, Maddie Snodgrass. Um, I'd like to thank also our digital uh, communications associate, Jessica Royce, for putting together the slides and promoting our event on social media, and Sean Sands, who is our producer, of today's event, but also our chief of staff here at PRI. So let's get started with um, the survey methodology. So the survey report that we released today, and I encourage you, if you haven't had a chance yet, to actually go and take a look at the survey on our website at PRI.org, um, comes from data from two surveys. Most of the data come from our 2022 American Values Atlas, which was conducted in March, uh, through December of 2022. And this survey has a essentially enormous number of respondents, which makes it extremely valuable in terms of parsing out and digging into state level data and digging into sort of groups in American society who are often underrepresented in survey research. And so we have close to 23,000 adults in our, in our survey here. We also have some data to share a little bit later in the uh, report and in the presentation today that came from a survey that we released in July, but which was conducted in late June of 2022, immediately after the Dobbs decision was handed down by the US Supreme Court. That is a smaller sample, but we get into some more, I think, nuanced questions in the end that we're gonna to cover today. Finally, I'd just like to say thank you to the David and Lucille Packard Foundation, as well as Michelle Mercer and Bruce Golden, who uh, generously funded uh, the survey research we're presenting today. Okay, so let's just take a quick look at the overall trend with respect to how Americans feel about abortion legality. PRI has been looking at the issue of abortion attitudes really for well over the past decade. And so here we're presenting some more longitudinal data analysis where we look at how Americans' attitudes about abortion legality have changed since 2010, currently to the last year. 
And one of the most interesting trends, I think, in American attitudes when it comes to abortion policy is that there's been a slight uptick in the number of Americans who think that abortion should be legal in all or most cases. So starting in 2010, you'll see, for example, that, let me get back to that, that roughly half, 55% of Americans tended to say that abortion should be legal in all or most cases. But by the end of our survey in 2022, if we look at this data over time, we see that's actually gone up to about 65%. So there's been a gradual increase in the percentage of Americans who are leaning more in favor of abortion legality in most or all cases over the last decade or so. That shift, however, has largely been, been driven more by Democrats and independents than Republicans. And so here we've graphed out abortion attitudes by partisanship, looking at Republicans and Democrats. You'll see that Republicans have largely stayed the same. About 35% to 37% in the last year of Republicans say that abortion should be legal. Uh, but we see more of an uptick among Democrats. So in 2010, 71% of Democrats said that abortion should be legal, but it's almost to 90%, 87% by the, the, the time that we took our survey in the last year. I would also add here, in our report, we have more details about the impact of the, the Dobbs decision specifically on attitudes about abortion, but we did not notice any perceptible change in legality in wake of the Dobbs decision. So in March, when we first fielded our survey about abortion attitudes, about 64% of Americans said that they were in favor of abortion, but really by the end of December, it was still at about 65%. So no discernible change in abortion attitudes in the wake of Dobbs. But again, there has been a change really over the last decade. I want to turn next to take a look at abortions legality by state level. Again, one of the benefits of our American Values Atlas is that we're able to dig deeper into all 50 states. We have enough cases with that sample of 23,000 Americans. And what we find here in terms of abortion legality, only in seven states do we find that half of respondents, less than half of respondents say abortion should be legal in all or, or no cases. Um, by contrast, we have majorities of residents in most of those states where we see a larger support for abortion legality. And we went back and we looked at similar data we had conducted in 2018. That's the last time we had data available um, for the 50 state analysis. And since that time, there has been really an uptick in abortion support, um, support for abortion legality in, in all of the states from 2018 to the end of 2022. Uh, We also took a look at uh, residents and states with respect to the opposite position. So here we're graphing Americans who say that abortion should be illegal in all cases. Um, roughly one in 10 Americans, slightly less than that, say abortion should be illegal in all cases. But yet we're finding in no state do a majority or even close to a majority of residents say that abortion should be completely banned. Um, the most common uh, respondents who the highest level of support for an abortion ban really reached about 14%, and those were in seven states, Texas, West Virginia, Louisiana, um, Idaho, Tennessee, and Arkansas. I'm sorry, that's six states, not seven states. But even here, just 14% of residents say that abortion should be banned. And yet those are states that have impacted, have instituted policies uh, passed by their state legislature, signed by their governors that have effectively banned the procedure. So I think the important takeaway here is the policy that's happening in the states really doesn't match what's happening with respect to public opinion. Um, breaking that down by party, um, of course, you won't be surprised if you follow this issue at all that uh, Americans are polarized when it comes to, to party on abortion attitudes. But I think what's notable here, again, we're looking at the percentage of Americans who say that abortion should be illegal in all cases. Um, in 2010, again, looking at this longitudinally, uh, about two in 10 Republicans supported an abortion ban. That's actually dropped to 14% in 2022. Similarly, um, we see a drop in support for abortion bans among the general public as well. About 15% of Americans overall in 2010 supported an abortion ban. And that obviously has dropped, um, has dropped since that time. 
Next, I wanted to take a deeper dive into looking at views on abortion by religious tradition. We are, after all, the Public Religion Research Institute, so we're very interested in how religion colors people's attitudes on, on abortion. And here we're actually graphing, um, graphing uh, the legality of abortion, illegality support for a number of, of religious groups. And so here are Americans who say that they have some sort of religious affiliation. We also have, if you look at the second bar down, the unaffiliated Americans who claim no religious affiliation. Um, it shouldn't be too shocking if you go to the bottom of the graph that we see that white evangelical Protestants are the group least likely to support abortion legality. Um, white evangelicals disproportionately make up a base of the Republican Party. Um, those leaders in those circles and voters who are white evangelical Protestant tend to be very much opposed to, to abortion rights. And that is, that is clearly coming through in our data. Um, we also find Jehovah's Witnesses, Latter-day Saints or Mormons, and Hispanic Protestants lean in favor of saying abortion should be illegal in most or all cases. But the flip side, I think, and maybe a slightly more interesting story to tell, is that most Americans who identify with the religion tend to be in favor of abortion's legality in all or most cases. Um, the most, I think, ardent supporters of abortion legality in terms of all cases would be Unitarians and the religiously unaffiliated. Um, but so do American Jews who've had a long, I think, history of supporting uh, abortion rights in terms of their denomination. Um, I think what's interesting though, is again, we're able to, because of the large size of our survey, dig into groups that typically don't get represented in national surveys. So Buddhists, Hindus, Muslims, we find that those, um, those adherents of those minority faiths tend to be supportive of abortion rights. The one thing I'd also point out is looking at Catholics. Um, so depending on whether you're a Catholic of color, a white Catholic or Hispanic Catholic, uh, those Catholics in the United States tend to be disproportionately more in favor of abortion rights than, than opposed. And I think that's also an important finding here. We also found too, and just looking again at um, attitudes about abortion among religious adherents across the country, there was really no shift uh, in terms of changes of, of attitudes uh, with respect to the Dobbs decision. One change, and we talk a little bit about this in the, um, in the study, is that Black Protestants and Hispanic Catholics actually became more supportive of abortion and legality in all cases. So you saw a little bit of a shift from those saying it should be legal in most cases to broader support for legality in all cases among Black Protestants and among uh, Hispanic Catholics. But generally speaking, there was really not much shifting when it came to religious uh, opinions on abortion during uh, 2022 before or after Dobbs. We also took a little bit of a deeper dive into looking at abortion legality by age. And so here we uh, separate Americans into 18 to 29 year olds, 30 to 49 year olds, 50 to 64 year olds, and those who are 65 and older. And one of the things that we're seeing, and this is a trend that's been happening in recent years, is that younger Americans are becoming more supportive of abortion rights than older Americans. Um, so this is the group that's pretty distinct when it comes to support for abortions legality, especially in all cases. So here we're finding that 38% of uh, Americans aged 18 to 29, that's Gen Zers and some younger millennials uh, are supportive of abortions legality in all cases. And generally combined 68%, if you combine those two legal cases, uh, we find more than two thirds of younger Americans are supportive of abortion legality here. Um, I would also say we don't have this in the chart, but it is in our report. I think one trend that's worth noting is looking at gender and younger Americans. So most of Americans, there's no gender, there are no gender differences when it comes to abortion attitudes. And we've long known that people who study abortion attitudes often find that gender isn't as significant as you might think when it comes to explaining people's attitudes about abortion. Among young women and young men, however, there does appear to be a little bit of a gender gap emerging. So we find in our 23,000 strong survey uh, from the American Values Atlas that 71% of young women are supportive of abortions legality in all or most cases compared to 65% of men. So there is a little bit of a gender gap emerging among younger Americans. Next, I wanted to turn to Americans' views about um, the overturning of Roe versus Wade. And so here is a 50 graph a 50 state graph of the percentage of Americans who favor, strongly favor or, or favor overturning uh, Roe versus Wade. 
And I think what's really notable, it's by the end of the year, we had found that less than half of residents in every state favor overturning Roe. And so there's really no clear case uh, among residents in any state that agree with the overturning of Roe uh, necessarily. Of course, they range from 25% to 48%. And we tend to find that support in favor of overturning Roe is higher in Midwestern and Southern states. Um, but again, I think a really important takeaway is that we're not seeing that most Americans are in favor of supporting Roe. Of course, that differs by party. And so uh, the last chart that I'm going to be uh, looking at before I turn it over to Dr. Natalie Jackson is the percentage of Americans who support the overturn by party affiliation. Uh, generally speaking, if you look at the middle line first, we see that about 36%, and by the end of the year, 35% of Americans said that they thought overturning of Roe versus Wade was a good idea, or they supported that, that uh, decision by the Supreme Court. But clearly, the parties uh, have become more polarized on this issue. Um, at the beginning of the year, it looked like there was actually more less support for the, the overturning of Roe by Republicans by the end of the year. Um, I think that most partisans have come to accept and support that decision. Whereas with Democrats, there, of course, tends to be less support of that decision overall. All right, so I'm going to turn uh, the presentation over to Natalie Jackson. Great. So picking up with the next set of questions. So we asked uh, if people knew what would happen when or if Roe v. Wade was overturned. Obviously, it was an if the first of the year, and then it became a now that Roe has been overturned, do you know what's happened in your state? Uh, the answer options were, does abortion remain legal, become illegal, or are you not sure? Um, these next couple of graphs I'm showing you are going to be the not sure people, because this is where we saw the difference, right? Whether it becomes legal or mostly illegal kind of depends on the state. And we saw a lot of slippage in the states but, and still do based on different laws that are passing and court cases that are in process. Um, so can you go back? Thank you. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> So in March, about half of Americans didn't know what would happen if Roe was overturned. And this was through the month of March. If you remember, we had the Dobbs decision leak in late April, early May. So this was before we had the leak. 50% um, of independents didn't know. Democrats were slightly more likely to know. Um, but overall, we had... 48% uh, of Americans saying they, they just didn't know what would happen if Roe got overturned. Um, by June, so this was after the leak, but before the decision. So our field period wrapped up right after the decision, but anybody who does surveys knows that, you know, the, the very end of your field pe period, you're just getting the stragglers in. You really don't have very much of your data representing those last few days. Um, so this was mostly prior to the actual decision, but after the leak, um, you, you see that knowledge increased by about 10 percentage points, which is illustrated here as the don't knows decreased by about 10 percentage points. Um, and it's roughly even across party, um, across most metrics that we looked at, um, the, this knowledge improvement was roughly the same. It was about 10 percentage points after the leak. And then if we go to August fully after the Dobbs decision is out there, we the don't knows decreased by another 10 percentage points. And um, we we do see Democrats more clearly emerging as less likely to not know what's going on. Um, but in general, the the change across the year was on knowing what would happen if Roe was overturned was, was pretty substantial. It was about 20 percentage points across every group. Um, now we can go to the next slide. Of interest, the, the women's dynamic was very different by age. So you might not be too surprised that women over age 65, in the beginning of the year, 60% didn't really know what was going to happen if Roe was overturned. So if you look at just the blue bars on this, the, the bars that stand out, um, you, you see dramatic age differences 
at the beginning of the year. If you look at the green bars, which is after the leak, but before the decision, everyone's in line. The older women fixed their knowledge gap and were on par with everyone else by the after the leak happened. And then we saw the general trend continue of another, you know, 10-ish percentage points. But we, we found it very interesting that older women closed up that knowledge gap uh, very quickly after the leak. Uh, next slide. And of course, a hot topic, abortion as an electoral issue. So we've asked this question um, pretty regularly over the last several years. Um, thinking about your position on abortion, would you only vote for a candidate who shares your view? Would you consider it one of many factors or would you not consider it an important factor at all? So we, we typically just report on the people who say the candidate has to share their view on abortion. And that's what we're doing here. The lighter colored bars are 2020 numbers. The darker bars are 2022. And this is throughout the entire year of 2022. What we see happening is um, among those who say abortion should be legal in most or all cases, Democrats doubled in saying that a candidate must say, share that view. And we indeed did see that play out in the 2022 midterms it, in the exit polls showing that abortion was a significant issue for many voters, generally second only to um, the economy. We also see, interestingly, on the illegal side, um, whereas previously Republicans had been very likely to say they would only vote for a candidate who shares their view that abortion should be illegal in most or all cases, that actually dropped a little bit um, in 2022. So we had kind of competing um, trends going here based on party, based on which side of the issue you were on. And of course the counter, uh, you know, the counter positions, Republicans who think abortion should be legal didn't really change. And Democrats who think abortion should be illegal, they're not very many of these. So that difference is just barely statistically significant. Um, so there wasn't a lot of a shift there. We're in our June survey. So transitioning over to the June survey that uh, we mentioned up top, we asked a lot of questions about what people thought should be done about legislating around abortion in the aftermath of the Dobbs decision. So we were in the field within a day of the Dobbs decision. I think we might've dropped into the field later that same day or the next day. Um, and we, we asked up front, you know, where should abortion be legislated? Should it be Congress passing, passing a national law to preserve the right? Should Congress pass a national law to ban it? or should we leave it to the states? In general, only about a third of Americans agree with where we are, which is leaving it to the states. Um, more than half would like Congress to pass a law preserving the right to abortion. However, it's also important to note that the Republican modal position is not to nationally ban abortion. The Republican modal position is to leave abortion to the states. Um, and of course, contrast that with the independent and Democrat modal positions that would like to see the national law preserved. Okay. We asked a whole bunch of questions about different bills and bans and different things that legislatures were considering, as well as just some overarching access questions. 70% of Americans say that at least some healthcare professionals in their community should pro provide legal abortions. So there, there's not a lot of support for completely cutting off all access, um, which is similar to what we see when we ask about legality. Um, there's a lot more gradation when you start getting into the specifics. Um, we, 
asked about restrictions that make it illegal to get an abortion after 15 weeks. 44% support, 52% oppose. Um, laws that don't allow abortion except in rape, incest, or to save the life of the mother, 60% oppose. And it goes up from there. You know, we asked about the heartbeat bills. Of note here, we we did do an experiment where we tested whether people change their answer if you put in the question that many women don't know they're pregnant at six weeks. And it actually didn't make a difference. Uh, we, we got about 63% um, opposing six weeks heartbeat bans, um, regardless of, you know, the extra information in the question. Uh, opposition to the abortion pill through the mail was quite high, 72 percent. Uh, opposition to laws that only allow an exception for the case for the life of the mother was also quite high. And then about three quarters or more opposed making it a felony to oppose, or I'm sorry, making it a felony to perform an abortion, making it illegal to cross state lines, making it a felony to seek an abortion. And of course, the vast majority of people oppose restricting birth control in any way. So we have a, a good number of measures on where people are. We rolled all of these up into a scale. So you know we have gradations of a support and opposition, but by and large, opinion on th these policies really holds together. If you're generally opposed to these banned policies, you're generally opposed to most of them. Um, so we, we rolled this into a scale of support. So who supports abortion ban policies um, that we tested? And we see, you know, nearly three quarters of Republicans are in support of many of these. 80% uh, of white evangelical Protestants, 81%, um, are in generally in favor of restrictions on abortion. And then we see it falls off rather quickly. Um, not all that many Democrats, uh, not all that many religiously unaffiliated Americans, um, people who are part of non-Christian religions are not really much in favor of these policies. Um, so there, there's a lot of kind of nuance in who does and does not support these various bans. But if you're looking for an overarching kind of guideline, the this is it. You know, the the main support for um, abortion ban policies of various types come from Republicans and white evangelical Protestants. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Dr. Janelle Wong to give us her thoughts on all this and add a little bit more perspective. Thank you so much. And thank you for inviting me to be part of this uh, really awesome data rollout. Um, I'm always excited to see these new findings. Um, but even though these are new findings, I wanted to just um, bring up some historical context from my past work on evangelicals of color and this issue, um, because I, there's so much rich data here on evangelicals and race. Um, so sometimes it's, I think, naively assumed that the issue of abortion uniquely drove support for the GOP and especially for Trump among both white evangelicals and other groups, especially Latino Protestants who are mostly evangelical. But I wanna go back to some data that PRI collected during the Gorsuch nomination to the Supreme Court. Natalie, you'll remember this survey. So these data were released in 2018. Um, when Trump nominated conservative Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court, most white evangelicals did not believe, not, they also were naive, did not believe that, um, that the next justice would overturn Roe v. Wade. And when asked in that PRI survey, do you think Donald Trump's nominee to the Supreme Court will vote to uphold the constitutional right to abortion, or will he vote to overturn it? Just 43% of white evangelicals answered that they thought he would vote to overturn it. In contrast, so this is getting to the um, evangelicals of color, 64% of Black Protestants and almost 60% of 
uh, Hispanic Catholics, for instance, did believe that uh, Trump would overturn Roe. And I think the same numbers were there for uh, Latino evangelicals too. And yet, while only a minority of white evangelicals believed at that time that Trump's nominee would overturn Roe, the vast majority supported Trump, of course. And while a majority of evangelicals and Catholics of color believe that to be the case, their support for Trump was much more tempered. So this is, I just bring this up as sort of political context that this suggests that the anti-abortion um, white evangelicals were not putting all their eggs into the Supreme Court basket when they were making their calculations to support Trump. And at the same time, being more convinced that a Trump nominee would overturn Roe did not also convince conservative Christians and Catholics of color to support Trump. So I think the current survey also challenges some assumptions about race and religion here. For example, many assume that religious non-whites, particularly immigrants, are somehow going to be ultra conservative on social issues. But these data point in a very different direction. So we see that Muslims and Hindus in this survey, both groups which are likely to be majority immigrant in this sample are among the more progressive on abortion access. This is something I think Melissa underscored with upwards of 65% of these groups supporting abortion in all or most cases. And these samples were not bad. As you say, they, these samples actually approached 100. Um, and we have an even bigger sample of Hispanic Protestants, most of whom are evangelical, who are not majority immigrant, but that sample does contain a large number of immigrants. And that group is half as likely to say abortion should be illegal in all cases as their white evangelical counterparts. So let me just say that again, that Hispanic Protestants, most of whom are evangelical, are half as likely to say abortion should be illegal in all cases as their white evangelical counterparts. And Hispanic Protestants are much more likely to very strongly oppose the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade. So one out of three very strongly opposed the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade than white evangelicals. So one out of three Hispanic Protestants opposed that decision and one out of five white evangelicals strongly opposed. So these racial differences among those who share similar religious affiliations and traditions are quite important here. And I'll wrap up with this. I think it's clear from these data that race just matters more broadly when it comes to abortion attitudes. In survey after survey, we see that Black respondents tend to exhibit the most progressive views about abortion legality. And I'll point out a little, a less known uh, kind of trend, which is that Asian Americans, which are a fast growing group, another group I study, are converging with their black counterparts here. So these findings are consistent with other surveys, PRIs and others, showing that Asian Americans who many might assume are conservative on social issues, because again, we are a majority immigrant population, Asian Americans are the next most supportive group uh, of on abortion legality, the most next more supportive of the major racial groups. So both black and Asian Americans in this survey were more supportive of abortion being legal in all cases than the general US public. That really popped out for me. And this is driven to some degree by democratic partisanship, but I also think it's a critical aspect of racial politics in the US. And at the same time, if the Democrats want to take advantage of these dynamics, and mobilize Asian Americans around this issue, these data suggest more work needs to be done. Asian Americans are more progressive than other Americans than Americans more generally on abortion, but they're also more likely, they were more likely than other racial groups to say that abortion was just one of many issues that they considered in elections and vote choice, and that they would vote for a candidate that did not share their views on this issue. So these are just some trends to watch for the future. And let's open it up to Q&A. Great. Um, thank you very much, Janelle. Uh, Natalie, did you have any response to Janelle? Should we just move into the questions? Let's just go to questions. OK, let's see what you guys have come up with here. All right. So um, 
Let's start with uh, Richard Skinner. Um, he writes that attitudes on abortion are increasingly, increasingly partisan, but there are still a fair number of pro-choice Republicans. What can you tell us about them? How do they differ from other Republicans or from other pro-choice voters? And he also said, thank you for the rest of the crew for some great work, so we appreciate that. Um, so Natalie, did you wanna take a crack at that? Sure. Um, so we we do have a good number of pro pro choice Republicans. Those are likely driving along with some of their other compatriots. Um, that substantial percentage that we see who say abortion legislation should be left to the states. So they they generally kind of think we've landed in the right place um, now that Roe has been overturned. And I, I think that um, probably means they're they're less solid on that position. We do see that Republicans who are um, in favor of abortion being legal in most or all cases, we see that they are less likely to say it's a voting issue for them. Um, so I, I think that's a, a very clear trend. And that did not change at all. Um, between 2020 and this survey. So I, I think it's it's less of a critical issue for them than it is for um, other Republicans. And they are probably in that group that agrees, you know, we, we've left it to the states, that's where it should be. Yeah, that, that's a good question. I go back to the chart that we presented, the butterfly chart, where we looked at uh, Republicans who indicate support for abortion legality in all or most cases compared to Democrats who also are the reverse position from what their party uh, actually holds, which is Democrats who in fact are more uh, opposed to abortion rights. I think in both cases, you know, we have, I think social scientists have referred to this idea as cross-cutting cleavages, like there's these cross pressures that means that sometimes partisans have. And I think that in the state of today's politics, partisan leaders clearly are on one side of the, uh, or of the aisle or the other. Um, but I think if you still identify with the party that does not have your abortion position, you're, I think, just by default, less likely to view it as a critical voting issue. And we see that playing out in the data. Uh, Richard, though, that was a great question. And we probably should do some more digging into both pro-choice Republicans and maybe uh, uh, Democrats who also are opposed to abortion rights. That would be interesting to see what these folks actually look like uh, in today's politics. Okay. So, um, this is from an anonymous uh, person. Thank you for this great event and findings. Interesting finding. Digging further into your data, where do you find the most shifts in abortion support before and after the Dobbs decision? Um, well, I think just generally speaking, we didn't really find much with respect to shifting after the Dobbs decision. Uh, there clearly has been, I think, a gradual shift over the last decade of Americans being more supportive in general of abortion legality. But it, it wasn't as though Dobbs suddenly, I think, switched a, 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 a light or something to, to that effect. Um, as I noted in the presentation, we did see some shifting with respect to, uh, uh, you know, with Black Protestants and Latino Catholics who kind of moved in terms of their intensity. And getting back to, I think, some of Janelle's points, um, my hunch is, I mean, it really can't get this exactly from the data, but my hunch is what's going on with especially um, minority groups or you know underrepresented groups in the American population. These groups historically, I think, have cared more about rights. And I think the Dobbs decision was an indicator for some, uh, for some Americans that all of a sudden rights that have been long established in American politics and society were under threat. And so my guess is that's probably what's driving some of the shift in intensity of support. Um, so that's kind of one thing that I saw there. Janelle, did you want to add to that or? I'm sorry, I'm not adding there. Okay, great. Um, another question that we have, um, she said, the study's amazing. This is Kate Hooting. I feel like it's Christmas, so thank you. You're really a data nerd like us then. <laughs> so um, uh, she said, I'm curious if you collected information about non-binary people's opinions on abortion, particularly among the 18 to 29 age group who might be more likely to be out as trans and or gender queer. Um, we do have data on a special, um, we actually carved out a little bit in our report, data on LGBTQ Americans in general. And so with 23,000 respondents, we have enough, more than enough uh, respondents to kind of look at that issue. And clearly LGBTQ Americans are, 
probably far more supportive, far, far more supportive of abortion rights than others. I don't think we have enough cases, and Natalie King, yeah, she's she's saying this, yeah. So even looking at uh, non-binary or trans individuals, even looking at 18 to 29 year olds, we only have about roughly, I don't know, about 1900 cases, 18 to 29. And so it's harder to report on uh, to those folks as a percentage of the population. I will again say that LGBT Americans in general are among the most progressive groups and that, that analysis is in the larger survey report. Okay. Um, so another question is, uh, do you have any data on the extent respondents are assigning to most cases for legal or illegal? Do they, do they define most expansively or narrowly like disability-based abortion, women's health and safety? That's a really good point. I mean, we have tended to look at the broader picture, the broader scope of abortion legality. And, you know, there is that it's, it's, a, it's somewhat vague in the sense of, do you support abortion in most cases or do you oppose it in most cases? Um, part of the June survey, the idea was to kind of dig a little bit deeper into looking at specific cases. Um, we don't really have anything larger in the American Values Atlas survey, unfortunately, but I think it's something we're gonna keep monitoring. And again, I actually encourage you to take a look at the June study itself, which is available online. We dig into some of those items a, a, little, bit, a little bit deeper. Okay. Uh, next question, they keep coming, this is great. Um, Katie Woodruff, do you have data on whether Republicans have shifted since June on the idea of leaving abortion policy to the states? It seems like the national GOP leadership has shifted more towards anti-abortion rhetoric than the more neutral seeming idea of leaving it to, to the states. Um, so we actually don't, I don't know that we've broken that out per se, but we did take a look at, and we contemplated including you know, something in the report that looked at the states that have banned abortion since Roe. There's, there are 12 or 13, depending on the status of court cases here, but it was such a moving target, we decided not to put that in our analysis. But we did go back uh, just this week, in fact, and we looked at Republicans in states where abortion has been banned, um, currently, I think 12 or 13 states, um, versus Republicans living in states where the, the procedure has not been banned. And we were looking specifically at the calculus of voting. Like, does that matter to your vote? Like once, you know, if we're living in a state now where the procedure's banned, maybe it's a less salient issue for Republican voters. And we didn't really find much shifting on that particular topic. Um, but, you know, I don't know. Now, did you want to add anything else about shifting to the idea of leaving abortion policy to the states? Yeah, to be clear, I, we don't have data, you know, we just asked that question once in mm -hmm. at the end of June. Um, but I think we do see Republicans kind of rallying around that, you know, Lindsey Graham tried to introduce a, a ban bill in Congress, it didn't really go anywhere, even among, you know, his own party. Um, so it, it seems to be kind of a non-starter. And I think it's important to note that, you know, this is actually a position that's consistent with classic conservatism, right? So mm -hmm. classic conservatism believes that the government should not be making these decisions, the, especially the federal government. So I, th I think this is a place where um, those Republicans that say leave it to the state are aligning with their their classic ideology a bit more um and i i think that's been a pretty consistent trend uh we just don't have the direct before after in this case great um we have actually a question for dr wong uh, dr wong talked about abortion attitudes among immigrants um can you talk a bit more about how immigrant communities differ from natives maybe in public opinion more generally yeah, I think what we're seeing is um, a, a pretty much a, an alignment with partisan trends here. So we do see, I mean, I think there are two interesting things to um, note here. One, we know that in um, that Asian American communities, which is the only um, racial group that is majority immigrant, that group has been moving uh, towards the Democrats over the last 20 years and kind of plateaued. Um, it when during the Trump election. And so there, there's an interesting moment here, I think. Um, what we've seen between 2016 and 2020 is that Asian Americans and, um, and Latinos voters, they 
they kicked up a little bit in their vote for um, the GOP in the last presidential. And that kind of, we kind of saw some reflections of that also in the midterms. And so I think this issue actually is, you know, it's something that um, has been very, I mean, I think what we see is very steady in um, how immigrant communities are responding to it, but that the salience seems to be changing a bit. I think that's what uh, Dr. Deckman was talking about, that this issue is one that needs that that people have feelings for, but not yet necessarily strong feelings. It hasn't been driving their vote, but there, the increased salience, I think, is um, is a factor. And so, you know, I think it's hard to I did not see the um, the data broken down myself in this particular um, the data we received by um, U.S. born and foreign born. But I do think it's very um, important to look at those differences, but also to note that some of the assumptions around how immigrants are going to respond to these particular questions aren't exactly as people assume, in, in meaning that they're not as conservative. When the indicators here show immigrants are pretty progressive on this issue, a little bit more progressive than the general population. I would just kind of piggyback on what um, Janelle was saying in the sense that I have seen some previous research that shows that among Latino Catholics, for example, immigrants who are first who first come here tend to be more conservative on abortion uh, attitudes, whereas first, second, third generation uh, Latino Catholics have become, I think, uh, far more accepting of abortion rights in general. So I think that's a really good thing to kind of parse out and something to think about in the future, looking at country of origin, you know, what generation you are here. And, and, and I think that's a really, really good, good question. So or I have a question. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Janelle. Oh, sorry. Just one more thing that, and it depends what the comparison group is, right? Because yes, comparing U.S. born in the same racial group or the same religious group yeah. to, but if you compare these groups to white evangelical U.S. born, they're still not going to be as conservative. That's true. That's true. Uh, it's, uh, sticking with the religion angle here, uh, now that we have a question, do uh, you have any data about abortion used by religiosity, frequency of attendance, stated importance of religion, et cetera? We do. Uh, we have, uh, we generally show um, that importance of religion and attendance as both go higher, um, opposition to abortion increases. So to state that a little bit more clearly, um, people who attend services regularly and say religion is very important to their lives are more likely to say abortion should be illegal in most or all cases. However, there's a, a caveat that um, the people who attend more frequently and say religion is more important in their lives are usually more likely to say they're evangelical. So we can't uh, forget the, the evangelical tie-in. So it might be a bit of a spurious correlation where it's not all about how frequently they attend or how important religious is to their life so much as it's also about which um, brand of religion they're wrapped up in, you know, which, which, um, you know, the evangelical tie in seems to point toward both more religious involvement and more likely to say uh, illegal in most or all cases. Okay, great. Um, we have a question from Steve Kruger. Do you compile any data regarding the respondents having an overlapping identity as being both pro-choice and being pro-life? So we don't really have that in this current survey, um, but I know historically we have looked at that, that we do have a I think a minority of the US population who uses both labels. Um, I think that probably gets at Americans, many Americans who say that abortion should be legal, but they personally might be opposed to abortion. Um, I don't know if Natalie knows off, off the top of her head. I haven't seen any data recently that we've, we've looked at that, but that's something we could definitely take a closer look at in the future. Yeah, I think one, one of the issues is the concept of pro-choice and pro-life are not well-defined. And you could also say the same about legal in most cases, illegal in most cases, you know, what people mean when they say those responses can be quite different from person to person. So there, there's some slipperiness in trying to define 
terms where, you know, that's where we ask about additional policies to try to get the uh, more in-depth view on how they are thinking about it. Um, so, so yeah, the, I haven't seen anything recently um, that looked at people who hold both identities. Um, I would guess that's probably a fairly small group as far as proportion of the population. Uh, another question, do you know if support for abortion has increased, decreased, or stayed the same in states where a full abortion ban is in place? Or what is your general sense of how the Dobbs decision affected public opinion in these states? Um, so we have yet to do that, that granular level of analysis there. I mean, I do think overall, uh, Dobbs really didn't shift opinion. Um, so I'd be interested to go back into those states. But, you know, Natalie, I can't think of any major trends where we saw suddenly in some states a huge shift in, in attitudes with respect to um, the, the Dobbs decision having been hand down. I mean, I think that most Americans sort of, you know, abortion is one of those uh, policy issues in American politics where people pretty much know what their responses are. It's not something that can necessarily be, be shifted, I think, due to one decision or one court case or, or one law per se. I think Americans really have thought about this issue for, for a long time and it's pretty, pretty baked in. Um, but I can't think of anything, a situation where we had one state sort of suddenly jump out as being different um, after a ban was, was instituted. I think the difference is that uh, suddenly abortion becomes a more salient issue for your voting. Um, you know, and as Janelle was kind of referencing as well, you know, this notion that, well, I think the Democrats haven't necessarily tapped into all the people for whom abortion might be a salient issue. Republicans have long, I think, done a better job, at least in terms of electioneering, getting this abortion to be a salient issue. But as we saw, too, in our data, I think that's becoming um, less powerful. But of course, that's because the policy landscape has radically changed in wake of, of the Dobbs decision. So, um, we have another question. Uh, thank you for the study. What is the degree of accuracy, for example, plus or minus uh, four? So Natalie, do you want to talk margin of error? We'd love to talk about margin of error here at PR. <laughs> so yes, uh, yes. happy to. Um, so the overall data set is more than 22,000 Americans. So for the all Americans numbers that we talked about, we're talking about a margin of error of 0.8 percentage points. And that includes what we call the design effect, which is um, essentially how much work the weighting is having to do. Um, it's a little bit of in the weeds thing, but um, is for the full sample, it's plus or minus 0.8 percentage points. Um, as you slice and dice the data, that gets smaller. Um, another important note is as you move closer to zero or closer to 100 in the proportion, that gets smaller. Um, so for Republicans and Democrats, you know, those are roughly a third of the sample each. You know, we're still talking about eight, 9,000 people, uh, maybe a little less than that, seven to 8,000 people. So that, you know, is about one to one and a half percentage points in either direction. Um, and then, of, of course, as we get smaller and smaller, um, we the margin of error goes up. Our practice is not to report anything that goes smaller than 100. Um, at 100, you have about a 10 percentage point margin of error. So we don't report beyond that. Some of our smaller states have significant margins of error that are nine percentage points-ish. Um, but other than that, everything is you know pretty small, you know, within that range of 0.8 for everybody to, you know, one to 2% for the bigger subgroups. Great. Um, and I think I'm going to throw this question to uh, Janelle. Uh, uh, someone asks, do you see any significant differences between Hispanic Catholics and Hispanic Protestants in their abortion attitudes? And if so, why do you think this is the case? Yeah, I think I'm trying to recall what that exact um, number looked like. And um, what I, I'm going to pull it up right now, actually. So what we saw is that um, Hispanic Catholics and um, Hispanic Protestants were very close, but that um, Hispanic Catholics are a bit more progressive than, um, than Hispanic Protestants. And I think that's, that um, just follows the national trends too, in terms of most Hispanic Protestants are 
evangelical or born again. And so they align a little bit more with that, with what we see among those groups, although there's obviously racial differences. And then Hispanic Catholics, we saw were very, very close to white Catholics in their viewpoints. Um, so I think that group has been trending, like maybe Natalie and Melissa, you can correct me if this is wrong, but has been trending a little bit more progressive on these issues. I think that's that's spot on, actually. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, and I, I think too, when you look at it, that chart that we have, you know, using abortion by religion, looking at the Catholics, Protestant, I mean, sorry, Latinos and Hispanics, uh, Catholics versus um, Protestants, you know, they're actually more similar on the ends than you might think. It's kind of in the middle where you tend to have the Hispanic Catholics leaning more in favor of abortion in most cases, legality, and then the, the Protestants leaning more in terms of illegal in most, but they're sort of bunched more in the middle than on the ends. Whereas I think, you know, it's a good point to, to point out that white evangelicals look very different than the Hispanic Protestants do in some ways. Yeah. All right, we I, have, um, yeah. So I just wanted to say a special thank you to Janelle uh, Wong for joining us today, and Natalie Jackson for joining me and sharing our research findings here. Um, you guys have asked some wonderful questions and given us some good ideas about future studies that we need to be undertaking and future ways to look at our data. Uh, please follow us if you don't already on social media. Um, and there's more information about the reports. Um, we also should have um, the ability to upload our PowerPoint deck as well online um, once the um, the report, or once our video uh, actually appears on our YouTube channel. But thank you so much for coming out and for supporting the work of PRI. Have a good day. Thank you.